Okay, in this video, we're going to introduce you to the PolySelect modifier. That's right, a new modifier that you guys uh, haven't seen in this class. Which is pretty cool. It is. And the purpose that we're going to kind of present it for is to apply modifiers to specific sub-object selection. So kind of like like little parts of your object, if you will, and not the whole object. Right, and we've already talked about yeah. sub-objects. We've talked about vertices a little bit. We've mm -hmm. actually had to use them here and there. We've talked a little bit about polygons and edges. We haven't really gone into a lot of the tools for working with these. We'll kind of explore that more once we get into polygon modeling. Sure. But you guys are aware that you can take an object and convert it to, say, an editable poly. Right. And you have access to all these sub-objects, and you can right. perform things to them. You can move them around. Yeah, we did that right with there. the curtains. We're all good. Yes, we did. So yeah. we're down with that. Now, the poly select modifier is going to be very useful in, uh, in our particular case because it's going to allow us to apply a modifier to those sub-objects. Like, for example, you could apply a modifier directly to vertices as opposed to applying it to an entire object. That's cool. Now, this is where a little bit of confusion can set in. And before I really talk about the confusion, let me make a kind of a quick demonstration. Sure. Let's go full screen in our perspective view, and I'm going to grab a cylinder, and we'll create a cylinder over here, a big purple cylinder. That's fine. Yes. I'll make it a little bit taller. Let's press F4 so I can see the wires on it, and uh, let's increase those height segments. Okay. And um, let's see. I'll make it red, because I like red. Red is cool. Now, I'm going to get my move tool, and I'm going to clone this guy off, and uh, we're not going to be using this cylinder over here right now. We'll just kind of scoot the camera out of the way so he's not necessarily in focus. You guys are already well aware that you can grab an object, and you can come into the modifier stack, and you can maybe, for example, drop on like a bend modifier, and you could wave this back and forth. Very cool. Like a big living piece of macaroni. You could see that orange um, box around it, kind of showing where the bend is going to influence your object. That's right. It's actually encased over the entire object as a whole. That's right. The gizmo is surrounding the entire object, showing you the area of influence for this modifier. Yep. Now, that's going to be important here in just a second. What if we didn't want to necessarily bend this guy all the way along its length? We wanted to take maybe the, the second half of it and just bend that. Now, if you open up um, any modifier, mm -hmm. you can make adjustments to its gizmo and to its center. The gizmo being this box that is the area of influence. Sure. You can, of course, move that around, mm -hmm. and you can get some cool effects that way. You can also move the center, which controls kind of the pivot of where the transformation takes right. place. But notice it's still affecting the entire object. That's right. We need a way just to affect half of the object. So let's do this for now. Let's go ahead and take this uh, bend, and we'll throw it away. Now, what I'm going to do for on this cylinder is we're going to convert this over to an editable poly. Sure. Like so. Now, as you guys know, once this is an editable poly, we can expand this, and we have access to the vertices, edges, polygons, and well, there's only one element that mm -hmm. make up this shape. Yeah. Let's grab vertices. And I'll rotate my camera just a little bit. I'm going to draw a marquee selection about halfway down. Now, I know the uh, vertices right now are red on red. In fact, let me just go ahead and change that. We'll make this guy blue for now, or... Maybe something like this. Teal. Nice. Teal. So you can kind of see of the red selected vertices along the length here. Now, check this out. With those vertices selected, meaning that I am still in sub-object mode, I okay. still have a yellow highlight mm -hmm. line on vertex, I can go under my modifier list, and I can drop on a bend. Now, before I do anything, take a look at the gizmo. Yep. The gizmo is only covering the selected vertices. Interesting. Exactly. Now, uh, check this out. If I go and adjust the angle of the bend, wah, wah. Only the objects, that, or the sub-objects, that I had selected are affected by the bend. Yeah. It looks no. like he's in pain, too. Yeah, it looks like he's in pain, <laughs> almost like that we have a cylinder trying Ow. to shift its hips or something. It doesn't quite do, do, work. Do, do, do. But, as I showed a second ago, we could expand that modifier. We could grab its center, which mm -hmm. is the, uh, you can think of as the pivot of the actual transformation that's sure. taking place. We could slide that down. Ah, much better. And now check this out. Yeah, he's we kind of like leaning his head forward. That's right. Yeah, now he's if we like adjust the angle. Cool. It's like only half of it is flopping back and forth. Sure. Very, very handy. And again, you could see the area of influence with the orange box surrounding the selected vertices. That's right. Now, there's a couple of things you need to keep in mind here. One, if I go back down to my editable poly and I deselect these vertices, notice that uh, as soon as I come down to my editable poly, you notice we're still in vertex mode and right. I still have these vertices selected. Right. Max is kind of remembering that selection. If over here in my stack, I push this button, show end result which is going to show everything that's going on in the stack, no mm -hmm. matter where I am along its length, Right. you'll notice that we still see the bend. Right. We see our original, too, but we'll talk more about showing the end sure, result sure. of your stack a little bit later. So here's the thing. If I deselect these vertices, like if I click out here, notice they're no longer red. Right. If I come back up to my bend, 
Huh, interesting. We lose uh, our functionality. Yeah. So what's going on here? This bend was told to listen to a certain selection of vertices. Right. Max will hold selections for you. Let me demonstrate that real quick. I'll throw away this bend modifier. We don't particularly need it. I'm going to make a selection of vertices, very much like I did a second ago. Now, you can see them. Uh, let me kind of zoom in just a little bit. You can see I have these red vertices here. They're blue down here on the bottom, so you can see what's selected. If I come back up here to editable poly mode, and, of course, we're in object mode now. I can just kind of move the object around, play right. with it. I can select other objects. Come back to this object. If I step down to vertex mode, notice I still have that same selection. Right. Max holds these selections for you, and that's important for being able to apply a modifier directly to sub-objects. Right. So because of that, uh, if I were to deselect, like, let me go ahead and just reapply that bend to this selection of vertices. So bear with me just a second. Let's go ahead and click on bend, and of course we'll adjust the angle again, and we'll pull the center back down so that we're bending as if, uh, like, midway along a pipe. Mm-hmm. And you get to wah, wah, wah. It's kind of fun to play with. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So as soon as we come down to our editable poly, notice we've held that selection. Right. If I deselect that, the bend loses track of what it was being sent. Sure. Because when we created the bend, we basically told the bend, I want you to bend the vertices that I have selected. Mm -hmm. If you go back and deselect those vertices, the bend doesn't know what it's doing any longer. That makes sense. Now, the cool thing there is, like, you could, for example, make a new selection of vertices, and if you come back up to the bend, you'll notice the gizmo will expand to those two. Mm -hmm. Now, I have carried on for a long while now, several minutes, over just talking about applying modifiers to sub-objects, and we haven't even got to the polyselect modifier. Right. Don't think I forgot about it. <laughs> there is method to my madness. I just wanted to make sure that everybody was perfectly clear on being able to apply modifiers directly to a selection of sub-objects. Sure. We have a problem with this method. In order to do what I just did, I had to convert my object over to an editable poly. Right. What if I don't want to do that? What if you want to keep your initial cylinder object and all the parameters associated with it, and you could go back and edit them later? That's right. I mean, I have a cylinder which has, you know, cool things like radius, it's got height, and all these different things that I could adjust or maybe even animate a little bit later. Mm -hmm. What if I don't want to lose that control, but I still want to be able to select specific sub-objects in order to apply a modifier. Right. This is where PolySelect comes in. Now, some of you who are totally new to 3DS Max may be under a slight misconception that you only have sub-objects after you convert to something like an editable poly. It's not true. We actually have vertices, edges, polygons, the whole nine, everything right here, right. even as this is a cylinder. The catch is that we don't, by default, have access to them. Right. So... As but we that, can access them. We can them. access them yeah. with the poly select modifier. So let me come in here and go to modifier list. We'll scroll down. Here's poly select. Now, just a quick thing, and not to confuse matters, but I want to make sure we're perfectly clear, because some of you might have already dug through your modifier stack before. You'll notice there is another uh, modifier that's very similar called mesh select. This uses the editable mesh system as opposed to editable poly. With the difference between the two, we'll talk about a little bit later once right. we get into uh, polygon modeling. They are very similar, though. They are very, very similar. For now, we're going to be using poly select simply because we've been using a lot of editable polys. Sure. Okay, so from here, if I expand the poly select modifier, look at what we have. Vertex, edge, border, polygon, element. Ah, we have access to all the same sub-objects that we did on the other cylinder that we had already converted. That's right. If we check out his sub-objects, we have vertex, edge, border, polygon, and element, the exact same things. I have just opened up access to all of the sub-objects of this cylinder without having to convert it to another object. Sure. Now, check this out. I clicked on the cylinder object, and we get a warning. Mm -hmm. I'll talk about this warning box here in just a second. For now, just kind of, you know, nod and right. let's go on. Yeah, don't worry about it. So under poly select, you'll notice I can click on vertex. I can make selections of vertices just as if this was an editable poly. Mm -hmm. Once I have a selection, remember, max holds selection. So if I come up here to the top and step back down to vertices, it has held those. I like that about max. I do. I do. Yeah. Sometimes it bites me, but for the most part, I really, really mm -hmm. like it. Now, as long as I'm still in sub-object mode under the poly select, I have vertex highlighted and I have a selection, I can come back under the modifier list and add another modifier, a bend. Now, check this out. If I adjust my angle, we have exactly what we had a second ago on the other cylinder. Very cool. The trick here, the catch, the cool part, is that we have done this in a non-destructive fashion. Right. If we look at our stack, we still have access to our original cylinder if we want it. Mm-hmm. So I can come in here now, I can adjust my bend, I can really change the shape of this object based on this selection. I could step back down into the poly select, 
I could grab a new selection of vertices. In fact, if you switch on show end result, which again is going to show you the end result of the top of your stack. Right. I can make new selections of vertices, and you can see how that will change the final shape of my object. Mm -hmm. So I can select higher or lower. And again, we'll talk more about showing the end result a little bit later as sure. it pertains to polygon modeling especially. And uh, again, the key here is that we've uh, managed not to have to convert our object, which is very handy for us. Yeah. There's an interesting thing, though. Let's say I do want to go back and change some of the parameters of my cylinder, maybe boost its radius. Okay. So my first impulse is like, okay, let's just come over here to the stack and click on our cylinder. Boom, we get this warning message again. Now read this. A modifier exists in the stack that depends on topology. Now what does that mean? We have a modifier, in this case the polyselect modifier, that is, that is actually listening to the number of vertices, edges, and polygons we have on our object. Right. Whenever you hear topology, you're thinking of vertices, edges, and polygons. Mm -hmm. Whenever you hear that, just jot the that down. The building blocks of our object. That's right. Topology is nothing more than an object's sub-objects. Sure. Wow, that's kind of hard to say. <laughs> so a modifier exists in the stack that depends on topology. Changing parameters may have undesirable effects. The dependent modifier, the guy that we're talking about, is polyselect. It's nice enough to say mm -hmm. if you change too much stuff about the uh, cylinder, you might blow up the polyselect modifier. Right. And it says, are you sure you want to continue? You can check not to ever show this message again. I don't recommend you do that mm -hmm. because you have three options here. You can say no, meaning that if you click no, like you'll cancel. go, yeah, you'll go yeah. right up to the bend and it's like nothing ever happened. Mm -hmm. We click back on the cylinder. You can just choose yes, which means we do go down to the cylinder. Sure. Or you can choose hold and yes, which is very handy because that in that case, if you blow something up or make your scene unstable through you something you're about to do, you can just fetch your scene back. You can just fetch your scene back. Yeah. We'll click hold and yes just to be careful. Now we're back down in the parameters for our cylinder. We're at the bottom of the stack. I can adjust my radius. Which I can't, Very cool. can't do that over here. Yep. We don't have a radius mm -hmm. anymore. This is now an editable poly, but this guy is still a cylinder. Right. So I can you can still alter the initial size and shape of your object. I can increase my height. Now yep. notice, here's what it's talking about when it says you might get some undesirable effects. Yeah, you know, it really isn't blowing anything up, though. All it's doing is it's kind of moving that area of influence of your bend modifier That's a right. little bit. Then as we increase height segments, we can get some really weird things. Yeah, now things get a little crazy, because now you're actually changing the topology. That's right. And remember, it said there is a modifier that is dependent upon topology. Yep. Now as I go back and forth with this, we've actually damaged a few things. Right. Uh, the, uh, the or you may have just pushed the Ben's um, area of influence out. Well, actually, what I've ended up doing is I have uh, taken away at one point, as I dragged the height segments really, oh, down really, really low. Oh, the selection is gone. That's yeah. right. The vertices that I had selected in this case no longer exist. Right. Because we don't have those segments anymore. As I re-increase the segments, mm -hmm. those selections do not come back. Right. So as far as uh, Max is concerned, we no longer have that selection held inside the polyselect. Sure. So you have to watch out for this. And it makes sense, because polyselect can't start selecting things for you again when you add the vertices back. That's right, because yeah. it really wouldn't know where to start. Right. So uh, what I can do from here is like, oh, well, I just blew up my object. Let's go ahead and go back to edit. Let's fetch our scene. About to fetch, okay, click yes, and voila, we're right back here. Sure. So now I can click back down on my cylinder, and again, it warns you, you know, be careful what you change in here, because yeah. you could mess something up. Are you sure you want to continue? Hold and yes. And now, of course, we can go back and adjust the radius mm -hmm. pretty freely without yeah. really messing anything up. Then we can come back to our bend. We can increase our bend. We're starting to get kind of a candy cane look. Maybe come back to our cylinder. Hungry. Yeah, and then let me take the radius down a little bit further. Mm -hmm. And we really do have kind of a candy cane. That is really cool. So, I like that freedom that Max gives you. That's right. Now, uh, again here, just driving this point home, you can do most of this by converting to an editable poly first. Mm -hmm. But if you like that control that you have on your actual parametric object mm -hmm. and you don't want to lose that, you can get access to your sub-objects through a polyselect modifier. And on top of that, you can add your own modifiers. As a quick review, that's why we're doing this. Right. Again, you cannot transform... Uh, components inside of a polyselect modifier. You can only select them, hence the name. Right. Now, there is a modifier that you can uh, access, we'll talk more about later, mm -hmm. that will give you the ability to move those components around. Sure. It's called XForm, but we're not going to get into that right, right. now. So uh, let's go ahead and I'll just click no here. We'll stay up here at the bend. That's going to wrap things up for this video. Now, yeah. This, uh, depending on how you were uh, watching this video, this could be thought of as a lot to take in. So mm -hmm. if you need to, watch it a second time. Sure. Uh, I know I've said this like ten times. You guys are probably getting sick of hearing it. The polyselect modifier is just a way for us to access components in a non-destructive fashion. Right. That's the bottom line. That's going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone.